Hello friends, welcome to TechQuest channel. This is for the medical technologist by your tech. In this video, we will discuss about virus identification methods. When we talk about virus testing, we always think about ELISA test, immunochromatography, PCR test, immunofluorescence for hepatitis. All these tests are serological testing that detects the antibodies or antigens present in the patient sample. Let's list down the traditional virus identification methods like bacteriology, direct smears. Smears can be made from the infected area and stained for virus identification. We cannot use the regular compound microscopy for virus because virus are very smaller that cannot be seen under compound microscope. Electron microscopy is done for magnifying the virus from the samples or from a virus culture. Only reference labs and research labs can maintain the electron microscopes because they are very expensive, very difficult to maintain and it's complicated staining procedures. Fluorescent microscopy is done for few virus identifications from the direct smears. When the virus grows in the cells, the virus infected cells exhibits the morphological changes that can be identified using regular staining methods. Viral culture methods. Virus do not have enzymes for their survival and replication with them. They need host cells for their survival and replication. So they cannot grow in an artificial media like bacteria. They need living cells for their growth. There are three methods for viral cultures. One is animal inoculation method. Lab animals like mice, rabbits, guinea pigs, ferrets and monkeys are used for animal inoculation. Mice are commonly used with different routes of inoculation. Intracerebral, subcutaneous, intraperitoneal or intranasal. The selection of animal depends on the virus. You can remember bats were used for COVID-19 virus. After inoculation of virus suspension to an animal, the animal is observed for signs and symptoms of disease, visible lesions or the animal is killed so that that infected tissue can be exempt for virus. Maintenance of animal house is expensive and very difficult and selection of animal for a particular virus also difficult. Some human viruses do not grow in animal and some do not cause disease even they grow in the animal. So animal inoculation method is used only in reference labs and research labs. Embryonated egg inoculation method. Embryonated hens or goose eggs are used for virus inoculation. A hole is drilled in the shell of sterile egg and virus suspension is injected into the fluid of the egg. Choreoallantoic membrane, amniotic cavity, allantoic cavity and yolk sac are inoculated depending on the virus. Viral growth in the egg embryo is indicated by the death of the embryo by cell damage or by the formation of typical box or lesions on the egg membrane. Embryonated egg inoculation is the widely used method because it is cost effective, readily available, sterile, less labor is needed and maintenance is much easier. The third method is the cell culture method. Cell culture is a process of growing cell under controlled conditions. Cells can be isolated from tissues by digesting the extracellular matrix using enzymes such as collagen, trypsin or pronase. They are incubated at body temperature with a substrate of rich medium containing amino acids, carbohydrates, minerals, vitamins, growth factors, hormones with suitable buffer, osmotic process and gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide. The cells grow and form monolayer. When the virus sample is inoculated, they grow and, and some type of virus exhibits cytopathic effect and others are identified using different laboratory methods. The cell types, temperature of incubation differs according to the virus type. The DNA type of virus grows nucleus of the cells and the RNA type of virus grows in the cytoplasm most of the time. 
passage cell culture are maintained in the lab for long time by subculturing or splitting the cells called passage the monolayer cells are detached by each other using trypsin or other enzymes and the cells are diluted with fresh cell culture medium and grown in a many containers this process requires trained technicians and dedicated lab workers to maintain the sterility in the lab instruments identification of virus in the culture microscope electron microscopy can be used to identify the virus in reference labs and research labs fluorescent microscopy immunofluorescence if the cells or tissue is infected with the virus an antibody specific to that virus will be able to bind it when the antibodies are tagged with immunofluorescence material they are easily identified using fluorescent microscope immunoperoxidase tagged antibodies produce dark brown color for identification cytopathic effect cytopathic effect or cytopathogenic effect is the structural changes in host cells caused by virus invasion rounding of the infected cells fusion with adjacent cells to form syncytia and the appearance of nuclear or cytoplasmic inclusions are present the common type of cytopathic effect are total destruction subtotal destruction focal degeneration and swelling or clumping of cells the types of virus can be identified by their cytopathic effect on the host cells in cell culture heme adsorption some virus infected cells acquire the ability to bind red blood cells on their surface due to interaction between surface expressed viral proteins and ligands on the red blood cells heme adsorption can be used to demonstrate infection with non cytopathogenic as well as cytosidal virus and can be demonstrated in very early stage of cell culture in fact heme agglutination the free virus particle are are also able to bind to red blood cells and when mixed together will cause the cells to aggregate into lattice of cross linked cells this property is called heme agglutination virus containing sample is first processed in a serial two fold dilution series a solution containing red blood cells is then added to each sample well after a defined period of the time they are observed visually for the presence of hemagglutinated red blood cells that appear as their continuous layer of cells covering the bottom surface of the wall immunoassay an immunoassay is a biochemical test that detects or measures the antibody present in the sample the test can also detect the antigen in the sample there are many lab tests developed to detect the viral antigen in the sample and also the antibodies present in the sample immunoassays employ a variety of different labels to allow for detection of antibodies and antigens enzymes enzymes used in elisa include horse radish peroxidase alkaline phosphatase the product can give a color change in the presence of certain reagents direct indirect sandwich competitive methods are used radio immunoassay radioactive isotopes can be incorporated into immunoassay reagents radioactivity emitted by bond antigen antibody complexes can be easily detected using conventional methods raa method are not used in the labs due to potential dangers present by working with radioactive materials pcr rt pcr polymerase chain reactions real time quantitative polymerase chain reactions methods are used for detection of viral antigen or antibody in the sample heterophil antigens are antigens of similar nature they cross react with other similar antibodies the mononuclear spot test for infectious mononucleosis due to epstein barr virus it is an improved on the paul bunnell test thank you thanks for watching